All right, so in this problem, we're going to find the full wave function, full time-dependent wave function for this uh, wave function that we have here in this infinite square well. So in general, a wave function can be expressed as a linear combination of a bunch of different um, so stationary states here. So each one of them having a, um, a different spatial component right here, psi sub n of x, and a different time component, phi of t sub n, of course. Each one of these has a corresponding coefficient, which kind of dials up or down how much of these states are represented in this wave function. So since we have all this information for our infinite square well, we need to solve for this coefficient right here, c sub n. Now, before we even start, a good thing to do in physics, and especially here in quantum mechanics, is kind of get an idea of what we think C sub n is going to be. So if we look at our wave function over here, it's perfectly symmetric. And we found this from our uh, the first part of the problem. It's perfectly symmetric uh, within the infinite square well from 0 to a, right? So if it's perfectly symmetric, we can pretty much uh, guess with a reasonable, reasonable amount of certainty, pretty fitting for quantum mechanics, that the wave function will not have these odd terms. So that's like n equals 1 in terms that look like this. See these asymmetric, oh, they will not have even terms, sorry. So the asymmetric terms, but they will have the odd terms here. So all the symmetric ones that kind of look like this, right? Because we want it to be symmetric about the center here. So we should expect C sub n to only encompass odd ends. But before we even, you know, we can't, we just jump into that. So let's go ahead and turn the crank and see if that, uh, 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 um, prophecy will surmise from turning the crank. So one way we can find C sub n, and this is explained in the textbook, is we can use what's called Fourier's trick. Or for an infinite square well, C sub n is going to equal this integral here from 0 to a or the width of the infinite square well and pi x over a, of course, and then the wave function frozen at time equals zero. Evaluated over space, so in our case, just dx. And again, <clears throat> in the previous problem, we found that psi uh, of x and t at t equals zero is equal to a times x over the range from zero to a over two. And we also found that it is also equal to um, a times the quantity of a minus x from a over 2 to a, right? And we found that a was equal to 2 times the square root of 3 over the square root of the cubed, uh, square root of a cubed. Now, again, this we found all this stuff at the, the first part of the problem, so if you're just jumping into this, please watch that video. But regardless, we can go ahead and substitute this piecewise portion into this integral, and we're going to get a uh, two integrals here. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. We have this constant out front and I'll just go ahead and pull it out, right? So like we already have this A, this this constant that's um, common amongst these two piecewise functions. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it out of the integral for both. You'll see what I mean in a second. So I'll just do square root of three because there's, there's a lot of math in this problem, right? So we can just skip some of the steps. That'd be good. Okay, times big bracket. So from, 0 to a over 2, we have the, uh, the sine and pi x over a times the wave function at t equals 0 for over this range, which was just this part right here. So uh, we already pulled out the a, so that's just x plus the integral evaluated from a over 2 to a of uh, this portion right here. And again, we just pulled out that a already. So that would just be uh, a, oh, sorry, times sine and pi x over a times the quantity of a minus x dx, right? So in big bracket. So now we can see that we're, this is, this integral is going to break up into two integrals because this sine is going to be distributed to the a and to the x. So let's just go ahead and so I can just further reference, there's like the orange one and then the blue one, where the orange one goes times the uh, negative x inside there. So 
Now we can go ahead and start evaluating this integral. I'm just gonna clean up this a little bit. So that's just gonna be two times the square root of six over a squared, All right? And then now, big bracket, so all that junk uh, times. <clears throat> so we can go ahead and evaluate this integral. Uh, you can do it a bunch of different ways. Use substitution, uh, calculators like Wolfram. I like to use the integral tables because then you just kind of end up memorizing the integrals. All the integrals tend to repeat themselves for quantum mechanics. So this one's actually um, cosine and pi x over a times uh, a over and pi and the quantity and um, that plus let's see plus the sine of the n pi x over a right times the let's see here um the a over n pi again you can just use your uh um calculators and all that stuff so that's all that junk evaluated at a over two to zero, and actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna make um, squiggly curly brackets here to denote the um, <clears throat> the each integral. So then, okay, so that was this integral, this integral evaluated. Now we're gonna move on to the blue portions, the sine times the a right here. So that one is gonna be. Let's see here. That's one. That one's pretty simple, right? So. That's just uh, the sine function times some constant, right? So that's just going to be a cosine, specifically a um, negative cosine, negative a cosine of n pi x over a. The old chain rule came out again. Let's see, n pi evaluated from a to a over 2, right? So again, that was... Uh, just this blue one here. Now we're gonna look at this this one right here, this integral. So that one's a little bit bigger, so that's minus curly bracket. Try to keep everything organized, so negative x, cosine, and again, um, I personally use the integral tables, but you guys can use whatever you want, as long as you're getting something similar than this. Sine plus sine. Let's see here, n pi x over a, and then uh, a n pi squared. So that's all that evaluated from a to a over 2, all right? And n bracket. Again, for organization, this, or let me get this big thing, was this portion right here, this integral. All right, so now we got this stage. Let's start uh, <laughs> uh, plugging these in one at a time. So let's, I'm just going to scroll up here. All right. You know, basically, anytime you're doing a textbook, all nice textbooks, at least like Griffiths, um, if things are getting pretty messy with your integrals and stuff, you can pretty much guarantee that uh, they'll like can like collapse into something that's that's pretty nice. So all right, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and substitute our a over 2 for all the x's in here. So let's go ahead and do that. a over 2 cosine of, what was it, n pi a over 2. All right, yeah, so, and then some more constants here, but this is what I was talking about. So the, um, so already, so these a's are going to cancel. If you look here, it's going to be a cosine function evaluated of n pi over 2. So no matter what n value is, cosine is always going to be 0 for, for this. So this just go ahead and goes to 0. That's why I went ahead and just did like dot, dot, dot. So no matter what the rest of this stuff was in here, um, this whole term is just going to collapse to 0, which is cool, right? Like it's nice getting <laughs> sneaking your way out of math. It's a very physics thing to do. Right, so right, these cancel out. We don't, unfortunately, get to sneak our way out of mouth through this one, so we'll go ahead and keep putting the uh, values in here. So, okay, so that's, uh, so that was a over two. Uh, and now we're gonna evaluate the zero in here, right? So that's all that junk, right? Minus, and again, like this is still the open curly bracket, right? So that means I'm still, 
work inside this integral term right here. So, all right, but likely since it's evaluated at zero, um, we know this is gonna die off and, well, yeah, I'll show you in a moment. So it's just, that'd be like negative zero times some function, but like I said, it just collapses to zero because of that constant out front. Um, sine of zero evaluated at zero is zero, right? So we don't need to do the rest of those constants right there. So that closes off uh, that closes off this whole integral function right here for all this stuff here. So now we're going to move on to this one. So let's go ahead and put, let's go ahead and scroll up here. Oop, too much. Let's go ahead and throw that minus sign there open curly bracket to say that we're working on an integral, right? We're opening up this process here. So it'd be, um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and distribute all of the constants and move them out front. So a squared over n pi times cosine of n pi over eight times a, right? So these cancel, unfortunately, uh, it's not a n pi over two. so the whole term doesn't collapse, but that's all right. I got a feeling everything's gonna work out in the end. Anyways, cosine, let's see here. All right, doing curly brackets already. So not curly bracket, and pi over a, a over two. Oh, there we go. Sweet, our best friend, cosine and pi over two. So this whole term goes to zero. That's super duper, right? So that's the end of this one, luckily. So this whole thing was just evaluated here. Now we're gonna move on to this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a curly bracket. So minus, minus a curly bracket. So we'll start for the first one. So that's gonna be negative a cosine evaluated at a, right? So these a's cancel. Doesn't give us anything cool, but I'll just go ahead and cancel those so I don't forget later. Sine, sine of n pi a over a. That's uh, that's pretty sweet, right? Times some constants, right? But um, sine evaluated at n pi is always going to be zero. <clears throat> and then I'm going to close off this whole portion right here. So all that is going to be, that was all that stuff right here, and now we're moving on to throwing this one in here. I'm just gonna scroll up a little bit. Let's see here, minus, so our curly bracket's still open, which means we're still working on the integral quantity of this. So, let's see, a over two times a n pi cosine of n pi, let's see here, a, value at a over two, look at that. Our BFF cosine n pi over two. Isn't life good when this works out? All right, plus sine. We're almost there, everybody. Let's see here, pi, value at a over two. Uh, we actually have to write out the rest of the constants here, but that's cool, All right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and make a note here before I forget. There's that, and that, so we've completed this integral evaluated here, and now since we're done with everything, let's close it off with the big bracket, all right? So now we're just at the point of just condensing all this stuff down, which is like no big deal, right? So let's go ahead, condense it down, scroll that up. Two over a squared times square root of six. All right, so we had the, uh, let's see here, a over n pi. This was all squared times r. Oh, no, that was a sine. Come on. Sine and pi over two minus our uh, a squared n pi times our cosine of n pi plus r squared n pi times r. Oh yeah, look at that. See, it all works out, huh? So these two cancel out here. Let's go ahead and make a note of that. 
let's see here, uh, plus, so we're still working with stuff, and pi, is that squared? Yeah, that's squared, so that's, uh, sorry, my bad, just A here, sine, a lot of bookkeeping, and then, let's see here, that's it, all right, so cool, so now we're just um, gonna simplify this stuff over here, right, and we'll move to this next page, uh, let's see here, uh, we'll go ahead and put the, so that's, uh, this is going to be two times these, so I'm going to bring that two out, that two is going to multiply by this two and just turn that into a four, times the square root of six over a squared, big bracket, let's see here, uh, a squared n pi sine of uh, n pi over two, Bracket. I didn't re really even need the bracket, so look at that. That cancels out, right? And then, let's see here. That equals, let's see here, 4, four times square root of 6. Or I could just put, yeah, over n over n pi. Uh, sine. All right, I see where we're going now. So, okay, so this is weird, right? So... As n goes from 1 to infinity, right? So this this whole thing kind of changes sign, right? So if if n equals 1, uh, then that's just going to be equal to, let's see here, kids screaming. Um, if n equals 1, that's just going to be equal to, let's see here, 1 first. Okay, so here it is. Okay, okay if it's even... This whole thing goes to zero because sign of of any even thing. So for n equals zero, if n is equal is even, right? And then it's just going to equal uh, alternating back and forth between negative one and one for odd values for n equals odd, right? And the the tricky this is like a math trick thing or um, like a super secret formula. If you want to do like an alternating negative one and one, then negative one and one based off of the odd terms, this is how you do it. And minus one over two, right? That's uh, that's how you create uh, negative alternating negative one, positive one, negative one, positive one. <clears throat> when you when you're only dealing with odd numbers, right? It's the secret menu of math right there. So uh, throw that one in your little toolbox, but that way. Um, <clears throat> that's what we remember here. And again, like just in case after all that math. We're actually <laughs> solving for uh, that coefficient, which, by the way, remember what we were talking about at the very beginning, how we expected, um, the since this was symmetric, we expected all the even terms to be killed off and just leave the symmetric odd terms. It worked out. Look at that. So we got it. So now going back and plugging this C sub n, really it's just, the, really it's just this C sub n for odd n, back into, um, where is it, this thing right here, uh, we're, we're going to get our final form for the wave function. So let's just go ahead and write it out. Psi of x, t, is equal to the summation of all these terms, where they're 1, 3, 5, dot, 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 going off to infinity, the odd infinity, right? Um, where our c sub n, where is it, yeah, our c sub n, I'm just going to put it in the big brackets here, 4 times the square root of 6, and pi with our super secret math mathematician formula for uh, alternating positive 1 negative ones. Let's see here, uh, 2 over a square root of sine and pi x, oops, Sin, sine pi x over a. Uh, and then our time dependent or with energies, yeah, E sub n. Oh, so forgot to close that off. And there it is. That's it. That's our uh, that's our answer finally. And it's exactly what we thought it would be. It's just the odd values of n. So that's that's how you find the wave function's final form for this problem.